Hello, uh, my name is Jim Wishmeyer. I'm with Bag In Loudspeakers and Acoustics, and I'm here today at Full Compass to demonstrate the E-Trap, the electronic bass trap. The basic problem with, with rooms for listening is when you make a room solid to be quiet, so you don't have noise coming in from the outside or noise leaving from the inside, that makes the listening room a good environment. So you want to have a quiet room, that means the room has to be solid and it keeps the energy inside the room. The E-Trap is small, it's tunable, and highly effective. Much more effective than a passive bass trap for its size because it's power assisted, meaning it uses the power of an amplifier to assist it in doing its work. And because it's electronic, you can tune it. You can adjust the amount of damping, you can adjust the frequency of the damping, and you also can physically place that, that electronic bass trap around the room in different locations. So you can optimize the placement. And the art of placement and tuning is what we want to talk about today for, for an E-Trap. Here we have a room that, I wanna, that I've, I've set up a measurement system. This is called SMART, and it's a dual FFT, and I'm just running a microphone uh, into one channel and the noise source into the other channel. Now, the, the noise is going out into a bag-end subwoofer, which I have in the corner. This is an infrasub, which is operating with a very flat response throughout the entire bass range. It's a good place to excite all the modes in the room because the room is the room independent of the sound system. Where you place the sound system in the room has an effect on how it excites the modes in the room, but what we want to do with the E-Trap is we first want to understand exactly what the room is doing. And now we're looking at uh, the response with a microphone against one boundary. So here you can see we have a couple of clear modes that, that exist from that location. Now, what I, what I really want to do is I want to I identify, uh, first of all, let me just point out, I'm taking a lot of averages, so we have a very smooth, very smooth response. I'm going to reduce the averages down to eight averages. Now, this, now the line wiggles around a little bit because it's, it's uh, taking random noise and averaging it eight times, but this is useful because as we later tune the E-Trap, we'll see, we'll see the, the results of the tuning much, much faster. If you take a lot of averages, you have to wait at when you tune it to see what it does. Here we can get an idea of what it's doing closer in real time. So now the microphone, which is against the 17-foot wall, I'm actually looking at the mode, this first mode, which, which falls about uh, at about 47 hertz or so, this first mode. I want to see if my, my quick calculation is right, because I'm thinking that that's the first mode of the shorter room dimension, of this 12-foot room dimension. So I'm going to move the microphone and bring it over to the boundary along the wall where the pressure is high at the particular mode of interest. Now, where the pressure is high, we can identify the frequency where we have the mode anywhere on this wall, all the way down to the floor, to the left, to the right, and when I go to the opposite wall, we'll see the same frequency. This is how you verify that you've got, you've identified that mode and that indeed you have pressure because you need pressure to place an E-trap uh, and absorb it because, of course, you can't absorb a null. You have to absorb where there's pressure. Also, you can verify that you've identified the mode, the mode between these walls, by going to the middle. And in the middle, you should see the, the energy disappear. So now you're in a null, and that's a good way to get to know the room by going from one boundary to the next and looking in real time on your analyzer. And then once you've learned what the room is doing, you're better equipped to tune an E-Trap. Okay, so now we've moved over to the E-Trap. Now the E-Trap is located right now, it's on the floor near the boundary, and I'm going to uh, apply damping to the, to the first mode of the room. The E-Trap is a, is a little cabinet, as you can see, with a 10-inch loudspeaker in it and a microphone. It actually uses the energy in the mode that comes through the microphone, through the E-Trap circuitry, and back out through the diaphragm. It uses that energy to uh, apply damping to itself. 
So when there's more energy in the mode, the E-trap can do more work. And when there's less energy, it does less work. And if there's no energy in the mode, in other words, if, you're, if you don't have a problem, don't have a modal resonance problem, the E-trap can't do anything because it only uses the energy that's available fed back on itself to apply the damping. Now, it's true damping because it not only reduces in magnitude, but it also stops the ringing in time. And that's the difference between true damping, uh, acoustical damping, and an equalizer. So here is the settings on the E-trap. It actually is a two-channel device, so there are times when you might uh, attack two modes simultaneously. Today we're just looking at one uh, to start with, and the, the first channel you have feedback, which is the control that allows you to turn up and down the amount of damping, contour, which is both uh, feedback and the cue, the width of the, of the filter that's applying the damping. Now, the problem, uh, the modal problem is by its nature a narrow band problem. So the E-trap targets a narrow band and we can adjust the amount of, of, uh, of effect it has and the bandwidth of the effect and then the frequency. Now the frequency goes from 20 to 65, but we also can internally adjust it up to a little higher frequencies at times uh, when, when needed. And so there's a coarse frequency and a fine frequency control. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've preset this E-trap for, for this mode, which is 37 or 30, 36 hertz, something like that. Um, it's also unique because the E-trap is the only bass trap that you can A-B. Now, you can't take a big Helmholtz resonator or a big passive bass trap and switch it on and off in a room. It's, a, it's more, of a, a, more of a construction project to A-B it. Here, we can just turn it on and you can hear the difference and you can see the difference in a measurement. So when I look at the measurement now, because I have eight averages, fairly quickly you can see the effect and you see the, the resonant peak, uh, the clear mode uh, uh, down at 36 hertz where there's a buildup in energy. This is the first mode of the room. This is where the most energy is in this room and it's where you will get the most benefit by applying damping. So again, now as I turn it down in frequency, you can see the graph, and now it's below the tuning point. So and as I come back to the frequency, now we're knocking three or four dB off the magnitude here, or, or maybe a little more. And, but importantly, well, that's a lot of energy just in terms of the magnitude, but importantly, um, we're, we're affecting the time domain. And now the sound isn't, isn't ringing and booming uh, in, in time, and it's also a little, a little less in magnitude, which, which uh, in this particular room, if you were to listen, to listen to a recording in this room, it would certainly be accentuated in that, in that region. So this would be a successful tuning for this room. Now you can see I could also take the feedback control and turn that down, and we could have a little less. And this is where taste comes in. Okay, then to summarize, the E-Trap gives a powerful tool now to work in the, in the acoustic realm. Remembering, this is not part of the sound system, so you could use this in your control room or in your studio where you're miking drums or have other miking uh, uh, instruments. So the E-Trap will have a positive effect on your listening experience, and for more information, uh, go to fullcompass.com. Thank you.